This video is about chunking your day. You can chunk by the hour of the day, or you can chunk your time by the day of the week. Uh, you can use both combinations, you probably should. Uh, I probably chunk by the hour of the day, um, and I kind of intuit how I'm feeling, and based on how I'm doing, how I'm feeling, I do chunk by the day of the week as well. So I do a different set of activities on different days. Um, but generally speaking, when it comes to the most cognitively demanding tasks, I stick to chunking by the hour of the day. So uh, what am I talking about? Um, so this is, um, well, let me switch to the next slide. Oops, okay, there we go. So there's a, a paper in psychology, which I believe was, uh, well, it's right there, it's published in the 50s. It's called George Miller's Magic Number 7 plus minus 2. And uh, I'm not going to do the details because it's going to be a really short video, but um, Miller, the psychologist Miller, uh, suggested that we take in information in chunks and uh, not I, th I, 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 I think what the paper suggests is that there's a limit to how much of information we can take in at any given time and uh, I also think uh, although this might not be suggested directly in the paper but um, there's a limit to how much information we can take in to our sensory input uh, using the conscious mind in a waking state obviously uh, and uh, so there's again the limit in terms of what we can focus on considering that we only take in information in chunks uh, and then there's an overall limit of how much information we can absorb on a daily basis okay. Some background noise here because I'm at the um, community center. Anyway, so without going into too much details when it comes to George Miller's magic number, you can check out the Wikipedia page. Uh, basically, what it amounts to is that once you wake up, your focus beaker is full, and um, everything that you do from that point onwards chips away at your focus. So if you wake up and you watch the news and you check your social media accounts for the next 25 minutes to half an hour, or even 15 minutes or 10 minutes of that, then you listen to the radio while you're in the shower, then you, um, I don't know, walk the dog and you talk to your neighbor about current events while you're walking your dog, you go for a walk together. And then you stop by the water cooler uh, before you actually start your work day. All these things are chipping away at your focus. And considering the fact that focus is finite, you probably don't want to do all these things. What you want to do is eat the frog. That's a metaphor. Unless you're really into frog, like I shouldn't. <laughs> this, no, this is not a humorous. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to inject the humor in there. Uh, but no, that's a metaphor for getting to the most difficult task. So for me, it's mostly cognitive, but it could be physiological. And so with your beaker full, um, you want to get to the most cognitively demanding task. And the best methodology or framework that I've personally come across in this realm is Cal Newport's Deep Work. And uh, it takes discipline, conscious intent, measuring the effort that you are putting in, and measuring the overall outcome. You gotta measure it over time. It takes this and a couple other things in order to be able to get used to deep work. Uh, I was reading deep work uh, over a period of three or four months. I did a very slow read. I think I read this cover to cover or uh, went through the audiobook. And um, it's, uh, I don't know if it's for everyone, but if you are focused on getting the results that you seek, then 
I think as more and more time passes by, it's going to become imperative that we engage in deep work. Uh, I think focus is the currency of the future with respect to uh, being effective in a workforce or an environment that is constantly changing. In order for you to be able to adapt to it, you have to engage in deep work. I don't think there is any other way. Till the time comes where like, we have standard assimilated knowledge protocols and occurs really in sense and uh, brain machine interfaces. But till that time, deep work is the framework. And I uh, just so I don't forget to mention, your goal has to be documented. It's something that you should look at every day and not only every day, as often as you can. So you're kind of training your RAS or your reticular activation system for uh, for it to be primed that your goal is your topmost priority and you just got to look at it every day and make it as quantifiable as possible in order for you to be able to uh, just kind of keep hitting it, keep hitting the tasks that you need to accomplish in order to achieve your goal. So I didn't put David Allen's getting things done here because I haven't read the book but he's right. We, we don't really do a goal or a project, we do the tasks associated with that. that uh, endeavor and completing those tasks is what leads to the overall objective to be completed. Before I move on to the next and final slide, I just got to say, when you do document your goal and you look at everything, you make it measurable, you use the smart methodology. When you are dealing with a task, you might not have clarity when you kind of going in an unknown area and getting too clarity is what you really want. And the best measure that I've kind of personally come across in this realm is to keep hitting that task over and over and over again in a finite time frame. So you're not gonna do this over hopefully like seven or eight hours. Uh, and because when you do that, your focus is getting depleted. Your focus is gonna start getting depleted at the first 45 minutes or an hour and a half, like everyone's different. So if you are repeating the same thing over and over again and it's not clicking, you've got to try different strategies. And uh, that's why it's so important to hit the task first thing when the beaker is full. Because I think there is a correlation with respect to the completion of the task successfully, meaning that you're getting clarity on the task that's in front of you. And you do that with repetition. But you do it, again, in a state whereby your focus is full. I've, I've done a couple experiments here, uh, not in like a, like a structured clinical sense, but there's a strong correlation. Like sometimes I'm trying, I'm working on my mathematical skills on a very bare bones level, high school level. Uh, and some of the things like I'm struggling with in statistics on a high school level, again, is uh, like say I've already put in like an hour and a half um, or 90 minutes worth of an effort today and then I move on to a new area and I'm trying to make sense out of it I find that I may spend another maybe 60 minutes or even 90 minutes and uh, it's not clicking so I take a break I do something else I come back maybe it's starting to make a little bit of sense but what I do is I document everything and I come back and I hit the same task the next day and for some reason um, maybe it's just me, but it starts making a lot more sense versus the previous day. So I don't know what the neurobiological correlates of this of this phenomena really are, but uh, there's something here. So uh, when it comes to the repetitions, you want to get clarity on the task, and you should move on when there's uh, sufficient evidence that is quantitatively determined sorry let me let me say that simply you should move on when you are sufficiently satisfied that the task in front of you is something that you have clarity about so for example we'll use a random example here uh, the equation for a straight line is y is equals to mx plus b where m i believe is the slope and B is the y-intercept. Now, if you don't know what a slope is, which I didn't, I forgot, believe it or not, 
I, I like uh, I well I kind of knew like this, like what, what like what how does it really work with the wine and stuff and everything was like equation of a straight line. So I had to go back and look at some of the other concepts. So, like I had to go back and revise slope and I had to go back and figure out how to like figure out basically how the Y intercept works. And once I was able to do that, then it start it started making sense in respect to what is the actual equation of a straight line. And uh, I got clarity. So getting clarity is important. You want to get clarity, specifically in domains where there are chains. One thing is linked to another. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm most like, most of this video is about reason and uh, like sorry uh, about things that work. So uh, this may or may not apply to other domains, but. Uh, concepts and methodologies and systems that are proven to work. I think if you apply the chunking element to it, then your chances of success are very high. Especially if you don't give up and you alter your strategy, see what works for you and you put in consistent effort on a daily basis. So I think it's worthwhile that I spend a lot of time talking on like here in this slide because Cal Newport Z work is really the framework that you should adopt if you're trying to get uh, clarity around what you're dealing with and uh, just basically getting stuff done, getting work done. Last but not the least, whatever you're doing should be measured. If you're not measuring it, you're not managing it in a Peter Drucker sense. And it should be like, Peter Drucker should be on the left, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and in a Carl Pearson sense, you want to measure it and you want to report on it in order to be able to improve your chances of success exponentially. Uh, I don't know much about Carl Pearson's work other than this quote. And this is just specific to this quote. I, the, the, mentioning somebody in these slides does not mean I endorse all of their views. But I, I, there's, I think there's a lot of value and truth in the statement that Pearson made that once you measure it and you report upon it, your chance of success improve exponentially. Uh, so that's it. This is uh, one of the things, one of the um, frameworks that I personally use, have started using increasingly for the past uh, little while. Certainly since last year, I set a goal for myself, which I'm not going to share about. This is not about me. It's about something that works. Uh, it was a cognitively demanding goal. Uh, it was one of my uh, kind of like most dreaded goals in a sense. I've always told myself that or I've suspected or believed, I don't know what the word is, that I'm not good at something and I changed the story. I tried a different strategy in terms of I tried a bunch of different strategies, but the one that has yielded the most results is chunking my day. I chunk by the hour of the day and sometimes by the day of the week. And if I'm doing that cognitively demanding task, this again is not just limited to cognitively demanding, it could be physiological, it could be others. I don't know what other realms would be, like spiritual, I don't, I don't, this is not about spirituality. It's about cog cognitively demanding tasks, and uh, if you are an athlete, I'm pretty sure you can apply this in some form, shape, or fashion. What I'm saying is this really works. Whoever's watching this, uh, please, if you'd like, give it a try. See what kind of results you are getting. Uh, don't give up, persist with the problem. Persist in the face of the problem wrangle with it develop that growth mindset do not give up keep going no matter what happens change your surroundings if you have to uh, like i said you got to try a bunch of different strategies there's got to be a positive emotion and feeling attached to whatever you're doing it has to be fun it really has to be fun if it's not fun i don't know i can't really predict what's going to happen so uh just because it's cognitively demanding and really, really difficult doesn't mean it doesn't have to be fun. So when you get a win, it doesn't matter how small it is, you gotta celebrate it. 
you got to celebrate every win. Even if it's just a little dance or a gesture, whatever it is. How are you celebrating it? This is what you've got to do. So going beyond, like, uh, the kind of, like, uh, I guess that would be, like, an extended version. But I made a video about, like, documenting most of every, pretty much everything I do in spreadsheets. I think that's a good uh, kind of... It's a good uh, video to also kind of review if you're trying to chunk your day because uh, again chances of success go up way higher when you measure the outcome you want. So that's it. I don't, uh, this review is probably 30 minutes long. Um, yeah, chunk your day. <laughs> All right. Any questions or comments? <laughs> I'll right, see you later. How do you stop this? Oh, okay. No, I think some of these are 32 minutes. It's only 15 to 16 minutes.